All right, everyone, and welcome to the next section, the end of chapter three for us. We're going to be going on to chapters four and five for the rest of the semester. Um, this is a good section. The last two should probably have been pretty hard. This one is not as bad, provided that you remember 3.4. Don't remember 3.4? If you never learned 3.4, go back, watch the videos, do the homework, ask the questions. Even if you already did the homework, do it again or do different problems, okay? Because this section will be difficult if you're not good with 3.4. Composition of functions is going to be everywhere here. So video one, what are inverse functions? All right. And you've already been doing inverse functions. Okay. You've been doing them for a while. Right. If you're, uh, if you're solving something like this, what do you do? Well, x is getting added to both. One is getting added to x. So we undo that by subtracting from both sides, right? Or something like this, right? If we have 2x equal to 4, well, x is getting multiplied by 2. We want to undo that, so we divide both sides by 2 and get 2. In any event, something is happening, we undo that thing and we're just left with x. Something's happening, we undo it, we're just left with x. And in a nutshell, that's sort of what inverse functions are. So let's write that with a little bit of more um, structure, mathematical structure. So if f composed with g of x, so again, 3.4 is coming back, function composition, f of g, okay? We do something, and then we undo it, and if we're just left with that x, just like in these examples, and the other way holds true, g of f of x. They also cancel each other out. Again, right? It doesn't matter whether we multiply then divide or divide then multiply. Either way, division and multiplication are going to cancel each other. Subtracting and adding, it doesn't matter what order we do these. It doesn't matter what order, which one is first. What matters is that they're inverse functions. So if this is the case, then we say f and g are inverse functions. Inverse functions of each other, essentially. Okay? Lastly, with function composition. So we're going to look at this a little bit and look at some examples and more so in the later videos. We're going to do a little bit right now. Again, for so, some notation. Here's what we do. We write f inverse of x like this, okay? And it's pronounced F inverse of X. And something to watch out for, this is not a negative exponent. All right, it's just a lazy notation. All right, so this is not gonna be like one divided by F of X or anything like that. So watch out for that. This is our notation, F inverse of X. That's how we write it. So really all we're doing in this video from now on is just going to be doing two examples where we show that two things are inverse functions. And again, this example is going to be impossible if you don't know how to do function composition, okay? So really brush up on your 3.4 skills. Example one, verify that F and G are inverses. So again, that goes back to the definition. They're inverses if their function compositions undo each other and we're just left with an x. So we're going to find what is f of g. Hopefully it equals just x. We're going to find g of f. Hopefully it just equals x. Right? So we'll start with a simpler one and then go on to a more complicated one. If f of x is equal to the cubed root of x plus 1, and g of x is equal to x minus 1, cubed. These are both modifications of our toolkit functions. That's not a coincidence. This is a toolkit function, cubed root of x, kind of looks like this. And it's getting shifted up one unit. This is another toolkit function, x cubed, getting shifted right one unit. Not a coincidence. We'll show, show that in a later video when we get into graphs. The third video, I believe. 
So f of g of x, remember, by definition, that is just plugging in g of x into f. Okay, so you start on the inside and work your way out, just like with order of operations. Start inside the parentheses. What is g of x? g of x is x minus 1 cubed. So replace the g of x with what it is. And now we plug this into f. So what is f? f is the cubed root of something plus 1. And f of x is just an x here. But now we have f of all this stuff. So all of this stuff needs to go inside. We replace the x with everything that's inside here. That's going to be x minus 1 cubed. So the cubed root of something cubed, those cancels out. We're just left with x minus 1. Still have the plus 1 at the end. Minus 1 plus 1, aha, uh -huh, that cancels as well. So what did we want? If these are inverse functions, they should cancel each other out. And we should just have x. And that's indeed what we just have. Okay? So we have to show it the other direction too. We need to find g of f of x. Similarly, that's g of f of x. Start on the inside and work your way out. What is f? f is the cubed root of x plus 1. Now plug that into g. So g, again, we started on the inside working our way outside. g is something minus 1 cubed. But the something here is not an x anymore. It's all of this stuff on the inside. Cubed root of x plus 1. Oh, I didn't give myself enough space. Anyway, we have the cubed root of x. Plus 1, minus 1, they cancel. Now we just have the cubed root of x cubed, and those cancel. Again, we're just left with x. So we showed it in both directions, but we're done. We have verified it. There were two things we had to check. We checked both of them, quite literally, with the check marks. And uh, we're done. All right. And again, the hardest stuff in this video is not 3.7. It's function composition. It's going to be algebra and simplification. So watch out for those. Let's do part B. Part B is f of x is equal to x divided by 2 plus x. g of x is equal to be 2x over 1 minus x. This one is trickier. Okay, I think I may have stolen this from the homework. I don't remember. So we have to check two things. What is f of g of x? Hopefully they cancel out. We're just left with an x. And we have to find g of f of x as well. We're going to do things one at a time, but just to be clear, this is the two things that we have to check. So start on your inside and work your way out and hope your cat is not clawing on your leg. So again, definition of function composition was plugging g of x into f. Start on the inside, what is g of x? It's 2x over 1 minus x, and oh boy. Your algebra skills are really going to be tested here. Because now what happens, right? We have to plug this function into f. What is f? f is something divided by 2 plus that something again. But now the something that goes here and here, is whatever's on the inside here, is going to be 2x over 1 minus x right there, and 2x over 1 minus x right there. And now this is an algebraic nightmare, or dream, depending on how twisted your mathematical love is. We have to simplify it. A couple of ways to simplify it. One of the ways to simplify rational expressions that are complex rational expressions is multiply the top and the bottom by the LCD of all the little fractions. In this case is going to be 1 minus x. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in this video talking about what's going on here, but if it doesn't make sense, you should definitely reach out and ask me because you will see this a lot in this section. Okay? So now on the top, look, we have this, 2x divided by 1 minus x times 1 minus x. The 1 minus x is cancel, and we're just left with 2x. On the bottom, we have to distribute it to both terms. This term is going to be 2 times 1 minus x. Plus, this term, again, they cancel. We're just left with the 2x down there as well. So, simplifying this a little bit more, 
This is 2x. We have to distribute 2 minus 2x, right? That plus 2x. Oh, okay. Minus x plus x. We're just left with 2x over 2, which is just x. That's exactly what we wanted it to equal. So they're probably inverse functions, but we have to check the other way as well. So over here, what have we got? It's going to be g of f of x. This is going to go very similarly. I'm going to go through this a little quicker. f of x is x divided by 2 plus x, if I can draw a 2. Plug that into g. What is g? g is 2 times something divided by 1 minus something. And if it's g of x, they have x's everywhere. But now all of this stuff is our something. x over 2 plus x x over 2 plus x. So we're going to do one more step, but essentially we're going to do the same thing after this. Multiply by the LCD. So this 2 becomes 2x over 2 plus x. And the denominator becomes 1 minus x over 2 plus x. So again, complex rational expression. Multiply by the LCDs of the little guys. And again, this is valid because this is 1. We're multiplying by 1. So on the top, they cancel. We're just left with 2x. On the bottom, again, we have to distribute. We get 2 plus x minus these two things cancel, and we're just left with the x. Well, now our denominator, plus x minus x, they cancel. And just like before, we're left with x. So... Get your algebra skills out of the closet, dust them off. They're going to come into play here a lot, especially when you do function composition, which we will do, be doing a fair amount. All right? So you should be able to do the first couple problems. Uh, ask me if you have any questions.